even they made different types of records and they knew they were doing that. It's like crazy. Yes, but so that raises another question. How did you were about to start your own record label? So how is that going? And also, how kind of success have you had? Because I've heard this complaint from a lot of independent artists with getting your stuff played on quote unquote mainstream radio. I know there's plenty of radio stations. Of course, you can have podcasts like me doing these interviews and everything, and small community stations like what COM is doing interviews. But it's a lot harder getting it on mainstream, and I imagine it's even a lot harder getting into certain kind of festivals and clubs and things of that nature. So I imagine you're probably going to do something a little subversive to uh, to upset the apple cart. But mm-hmm. how has it been, and what are you going to do to change the uh, to change the uh, the narrative, for lack of a better word? Well, you know, I think really if you talk to most people, uh, most people that I know think that mainstream music right now is pretty much, mm, I don't want to use that four-letter word, but I don't think crap is the four-letter word. I was allowed to say that when I was little anyway. But, I mean, I think there's a lot of low-quality stuff out there. I think it's very um, formulaic. I feel like it's almost like, music that's just supposed to put you in a trance and it's like a cheerleading like yeah it's it's just it's not music um and so i don't want to be part of that i don't i don't want to be part of mainstream music because mainstream music sucks right now I, i mean i don't know who's good in mainstream music right now i don't i don't hear anybody that i think is there's some talent i see but the overall artistry is not there um i don't think the recording uh, I mean, I think if if you listen to how things were recorded in the 70s and 80s, maybe even early 80s, there was kind of a peak of like the sounds you could get in studios. And now everything sounds like it was generated by a computer. Um, that's just my opinion. I realize that, uh, and I'm talking about mainstream stuff. So my, my label's doing great. And there's a lot of people who, like I said, who aren't happy with what's going on in mainstream. And so they're looking for, you know, places to find things that, you know, our artists are still trying to actually make music. And that's what I'm building my label. I'm about to uh, put out a couple more. uh, I'm not ready to release their names yet, but I've got a couple artists that I'm probably, that I am going to put out um, a, a record for them next year when I'm done promoting this record on my Blue Star uh, record company label and this label is just going to be devoted to it ha- the songs have to be good the songwriting has to be solid and i want to make sure that the records are recorded properly and in the right way and mastered <laughs> you know like pe- people put out records now that aren't even mastered and i don't know if you know what that means but that means that <laughs> if the finishing touches aren't there and sometimes if you try to play it on your stereo it can blow out your speakers because it hasn't been uh, the low end might not have been compressed, you know. I mean, that that's mastering is the end product of the recording, uh, you know, the whole recording journey. And, 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 of course, you know, I think there's apps now on your, you can get on your phone to master, quote, quote, master, uh, whatever you record on your phone. Now, the guy I use for mastering, it takes him three, four days. I sit there with him, and we go through every song, and there's a, there's a lot involved just in mastering, but that's part of making a musical product that's high quality. You know, you can – I don't know. Maybe I'm a dinosaur, but I just think that there's a right way and a, and a not right way to do things. And I think if you're going to do it, you should do it as – to the best of your ability, uh, the, the the way that's going to bring the most fidelity, the way that's going to touch people the most, that's going to, you know, have the most impact artistically instead of just trying mm-hmm. to do things fast and quick and who cares? No one's going to notice. I think that's, I think that's the idea everyone has. Like, ah, eh, no one cares anyway. Yeah, that's it. You're right. We got 10 more minutes, but that's the attitude that a lot of people have and everything. So if somebody was interested in recording for your label, what kind of musicians are you looking for? Are you going to be primarily doing established musicians, if you don't want to name any names, or are you going to be looking for some developed musicians? And what kind of sounds would you be looking for if somebody was listening to us and were like, I like what Kim was talking about. I like her attitude. I want to get on her label. 
Well, I mean, I would definitely, any type of American music, you know, uh, blues, country, uh, anything like that. But, but, but I'm looking for serious artists. I'm not looking for, and, and yeah, younger, younger artists are great because you, you have a longer period to uh, grow them and to make more records for them. Uh, I'm looking, my eyes are open to a lot of different possibilities. Uh, but but I just want to, as I move forward in my career, support people who are serious about making music uh, from an from an artistic standpoint to touch other people. So I mean, I would do gospel, I would do blues, anything, you know, as long as it's like real music that's thought out. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Like it, I just have to hear it, you know. Right, definitely. Now, if you were to give some thoughts to, or was able to communicate with the powers that be in the world, or just the society in general, this is kind of the way we close out the show generally all a lot of times. But you, if you were mm-hmm. able to just give your two cents worth to the world, either to the general world or to those people in power, what kind of thoughts would you share with them? There would be Kim Lent's thoughts as to what we could do to make this world a better place. Um, we need, the only thing we can do to make this world a better place is to make sure that all the children are taken care of. All the children that are being born today and all the little children that are here right now, they're being fed, they're being educated, they're being loved, they're not being abused, because this is the only way we can change our culture, is for these children to not be abused and to be taken care of and to be respected and to be loved. And then the future will be wonderful. That's the only thing we can do because the people that are already messed up, it's really hard to unmess them. But uh, these little perfect creatures that come into our world, we need to like uh, value that and grow that. That's, that's my opinion. No, I totally agree with you. And that's actually why I sometimes support some of our younger activists and everything. When I say young, I'm thinking about people that are even in their 20s and 30s. Yeah, they may make some thoughts and some attitudes that we don't necessarily agree with, but I'm just glad that they're out there at least making some noise because too often I think that some of our young young folks are not uh, paid attention to. So I'm so glad that folks like AOC and Ilion are out there making plenty of noise and are making people a little bit uncomfortable. Make more we noise. definitely need more more noise. Oh, I think I... we need a lot more noise. <laughs> Might even need some noise from some of those folks out in the West Coast because well, y'all don't know the West Coast is a general history has always had a tendency to make noise, but then y'all have us the only part of the world I know that can give us both Ronald Reagan and Jerry Brown. Talk about two opposite <laughs> ends of the spectrum. We got it all out here. Yeah, we do. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. I, lo- I love California as a state, um, but we have our we have our problems too. And we have to keep oh, getting yeah. better. We'll, 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 we're trying. Because <laughs> you, you originally moved not from California, but you moved from California from I was going to say that your home was not in California. That you moved to California. Is that correct? Or were you were always out in California. Well, I grew up in San Diego, and then I lived for about nine years when I was finishing college and started my music career in Dallas. Right. Uh, so a lot of people think I'm from Dallas, but then uh, when I had my child, I moved back to Southern California. I think you have that homing beacon that goes off when you have a child for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Dallas, I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure Dallas has had a very fascinating music community. I know I know Austin does, and I'm thinking Dallas yeah. can't be that far from Austin, so it probably had an interest in music community while you were there as well. But I know when they talk about independent rock community, they would put North Carolina in the Triangle, which is where I live at, in there with Austin and Seattle and some other places like that as being kind of the beacons of that indie rock scene that was out there, I want to say, in maybe the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, Dallas is kind of a you know, its own place. Austin has really been more of the music mecca, but for me, it was a great place to start being a musician because there were 
fewer musicians there, you know, less competition for just to get a gig. Uh, I think sometimes it's better for musicians to go to try to start a music community in a place that doesn't have one because, you know, it's like supply and demand. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about, I want to move to San Diego, actually, truthfully. And uh, there's not a huge music scene going on down there right now, but I want to move to San Diego and build one. But I like building things. So you, I like growing things. That's just part of how, part of my artistic journey. Is growing these things, so we might see the Campbellians Empire coming out of San Diego versus coming out of L.A. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> but don't but tell yeah. her where. I'm building a one-woman show that's probably going to be coming around in, a, in three or four months. Um, I'm traveling with my own sound and light, and I'm going to be controlling everything. And it's going to be outrageous. And I think you're going so to. When you say a one -woman show, so when you say a one-woman show, I'm assuming that it's going to have some theatrical elements to it as well and not just a music yep. performance? It's going to be theatrical. It's going to be, yeah. It's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm just, I've been working, every, I've been woodshedding, working every day, building kind of a skeleton. I'm bringing, I'm going to be running sound. I'm going to be running a few tracks from my record. I'm going to be playing guitar and singing on about three different mics for different things and maybe playing a little steel guitar, stomping. I got a stomp board I'm building. Um, and I'm still going to have lights that are programmed for my songs. I want to just be able to, I want to be able to do it all myself. Is that so, is it, I don't know. I just, it feels like I want to prove that I can. So this is going to be a one woman show. There's going to be no band with you other than you. Just me. I, I mean, I'll probably bring a couple people with me because I'll need someone to help me, you know, set up all this stuff every day and sell some merch, hopefully. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm coming at you. Watch out. <laughs> This sounds like this is going to be a fascinating show. So we're going to have to get you back on when the show comes closer. But you're thinking sometime yeah. in the uh, in the spring or the fall time, spring or summer of 2020? Uh, I'm or, thinking toward the end of this year. Um, okay. I, I'm about – I'm only two or three songs into uh, rehearsing what I'm doing and still working out some bugs on how to do it because I'm, it's going to be a lot of things going on at once. <laughs> Uh, so uh, as soon as I get about halfway through, then I'm gonna start booking it. Okay. So I'll, well, we're I'll definitely gonna have to find here. After mm -hmm. it gets booked, we're gonna have to find a way to bring it to North Carolina. Dean, uh, you think you and your wife will be ready to bring it to New Jersey, New York? That's quite possible. Yeah. yeah. So we'll I have to see about them. Places. Yeah, because he's based in New Jersey, but his wife has got an event planning company uh, that is working with two of her uh, friends called uh, Three Harlem Sisters. So they are just they opened uh, not that long ago. What was that, about three months ago, Dean? Yeah, about three months ago. Yeah, so they're getting their business off the ground out of there in New York. They knew each other for many years and have now formed a cooperative business together. So, And they have different elements. One is a regular cook one is more of a confectionery cook and then dean's wife is more into the event planning is that a fair description dean it is cool you got it well, all dean, covered. yeah they got it all covered and then <laughs> dean can help with some of the marketing and other stuff as well um but we're getting ready to wind down this show it's been great having you Kim. as always i enjoyed the conversation last time and i've enjoyed this one as well and this one you can actually catch online unlike the other one which i don't always record at com but this is all available on, we'll actually re-air it on, um, oh, what is that show that we're on, Dean? Skyhawk. Skyhawk Sky Radio. Hawk. And then, of course, right, and that'll be tomorrow afternoon. And then we're also on TuneIn, Spreaker, and various other platforms. So if you just type up Straight Talk with Dean and Mark, you'll see that you came in at about the 40-minute mark. And then we just had conversation for about an hour and 20 minutes. And it was very lively conversation. And we'll have to get you back on. <laughs> Um, next week, I've got a fellow podcaster on, as well as maybe a couple of the other guests as well. So that should be a good conversation. Then we'll have a couple of weeks off because Dean's got a business meeting, and then there's Memorial Day. But all of June and July, we're already booking stuff. So looking forward to that. Um, so if you always have any uh, party thoughts, thank you. Always fun to talk to you, Kim. And do you got any party thoughts, Dean? Everybody have an outstanding week, and we appreciate y'all for listening. 
Definitely. So uh, we enjoyed having all three, all both of you on. Uh,